The next part of cellular respiration is the citric acid cycle. And the citric acid cycle uses the end products from glycolysis and carries them forward and breaks down the glucose even further. The first thing we need is a preliminary step. The preliminary step means that the pyruvic acid that we end up with from glycolysis can't just fit in right away into the citric acid cycle. So what we need to do is we're actually needing to uh, refine it a little bit. And the way we do this is by breaking one of these bonds here and in so doing we're creating one molecule of carbon dioxide. And this is of course part of the carbon dioxide you breathe out. So this will be released through the lungs. The rest of it, the two carbon molecule that's left is acetic acid. And the acetic acid by itself is not able to enter the citric acid cycle either. So once again, we are required to use an enzyme. This particular enzyme is called coenzyme A. Not B, not C, but coenzyme A. And this coenzyme will pick up the acetic acid, and it will be able to pick up the acetic acid because we have a little bit of energy available from another electron transfer. As we move these electrons from the pyruvic acid into the NAD+, a little bit of energy from the movement of electrons allows the acetic acid and the coenzyme A to attach to one another. So once again, if you didn't have that little extra energy, this process wouldn't work. So there is a little extra control over this. There are multiple ways by which we can stop this process. In the end, you have something called acetyl-CoA. Biologists are lazy, you'll see this. So instead of saying acetyl-coenzyme A, we just call it acetyl-CoA, and this is what it looks like. Now that can be moved into the citric acid cycle. What happens during the citric acid cycle? Well, there are some molecules cycling, and so you're feeding your leftover bits of the glucose into an existing cycle that basically crunches them and digests them. So during the citric acid cycle, we're moving the remaining electrons off the glucose, whatever's left of it, and then only carbon dioxide will be left. Once again, we can do a little bit of the substrate level phosphorylation because we end up with a couple of these phosphate groups attached to some molecules that we can use for that. But the most important part of this is to move electrons out of this. Move electrons to the electron transport chain. In this case, there are two kinds of electron acceptors. One of these is going to be moved as NADH and the other one is FADH2. If you consider how similar they are, let's say this is a yellow electron carrier and then this is a red electron carrier. They're basically doing the same thing. They're simply carrying two electrons and a hydrogen to the electron transport chain. So here's what that citric acid cycle looks like. The citric acid, is, citric acid cycle is named for one of those molecules that rotates here, and this is it. This is the citric acid, and you start at the back end of the cycle with a four-carbon acceptor. You add to it the acetic acid, and this is what the coenzyme does. The coenzyme adds these two together, and you form citric acid. Now, this entire citric acid isn't broken down you're only going to take off a couple of pieces of the citric acid. Those are going to be your first output. Carbon dioxide, and of course, that goes out through the lungs. In addition, we're making more ATP. We're making a little bit of ATP, once again, through substrate-level phosphorylation. So there's two ATP made using that process. And then the rest of it is NAD plus and FAD, are being moved over to the electron transport chain. So these two go to the electron transport chain. So when all is said and done, you've now completed breaking down your molecule of glucose, and you have not lost a single electron. All the electrons are still accounted for. 
nothing escaped, nothing blew up, the energy, to the extent possible, has been preserved. And we've already used a little bit of it, and we've already extracted a little bit of it. So just by observing these processes, it's going to look to you, probably, like this could be a very efficient process. And there's a surprise waiting at the end. But that's part four. Thank you.